On one of my recent videos, I got a comment that reminded me it's been a while since we last explored a cool text animation concept here on the channel. Around the same time, I happened to come across a website that was recently featured as site of the day not just by GSAP but by awards too. And it had this really striking scroll based text animation. As you scroll down, the text starts off in grey, gets lit up by this glowing neon sweep while eventually settling in black. Now, I've seen similar effects on quite a few award winning sites, but most of them are fairly basic, simply highlighting the text in a single color as you scroll. This one felt much more dynamic and thoughtfully designed, so I figured it would be a great idea for a new micro project. So after spending a good few hours experimenting, I put together this minimal page with a few short text blocks that use a very similar animation concept powered by GSAP and Scroll Trigger. In this video, I'll walk you through how I built a reusable component for this effect so you can easily plug it into any text element across your site. If you'd like to see more animations like this built with Next.js in future videos, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project plus hundreds of other similar micro projects and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's get into the code. This time, instead of starting entirely from scratch, I've already got the basic layout set up with a few sections in place and some simple styling added. I've also wired up smooth scrolling using Lenis for this demo. The idea here is to save some time so we can focus directly on the animation component without making the video unnecessarily long. You don't need all of these sections in your own version. All you really need is a few text blocks scattered across the page. But still, let me quickly walk you through what I've got here in case you want to replicate the same structure. The first section is the hero. It's just a full screen section with a single image inside it. Nothing fancy, just a nice intro visual. Next comes the about section. This one has a header and a short paragraph of copy beneath it. It's a centered layout, just meant to break up the flow with a bit of content. After that, I've added another full screen image section named banner image. Again, it's just a simple visual divider, a static image filling the space. Then we have got the main services section, which is where most of the scrollable content lives. This part contains four different service blocks. Each one is made up of two columns, one for an image and one for a text block and they alternate sides as you scroll down the page. And finally, at the very end, I've added an outro section with a simple heading. Nothing important, just a placeholder to give the page a sense of closure. Before we dive into the animation logic, I also want to quickly mention that Lenis as well is already set up for this page. I'm using the official React wrapper from the Lenis documentation. Literally just copied the basic setup straight from their site for demo purposes. Now let me show you the CSS. This project uses a single global style sheet where I've kept everything minimal. I'm importing the mangrove font, resetting browser defaults and applying some basic typography. Each section takes up full screen height with light padding. Also, Flexbox handles the layout for services, images, and copy blocks. I've also added a small transition on the character class. This will apply to the letters when we split the text using GSAP's split text later. Finally, there is a quick media query too, just to make sure things stack nicely on smaller screens. That's it. It's all super basic, just enough to keep the demo looking good while we focus on the animation logic. Alright, now let's get started building the actual animation component. For that, I'll create a new folder called components inside the source directory. This is just to keep things a bit organized since we'll reuse this component across multiple sections. Inside that folder, I'll add a new file called animatedcopy.jsx. This file will hold all of the logic for our text animation. The idea is to have a single self-contained component that can wrap around any text element, whether it's a paragraph or a heading, and automatically apply the animation effect as you scroll. By doing it this way, instead of hard coding the animation directly into each section, we can simply wrap any text with this component and the animation will just work. Let's start building the component now. At the very top of the file, I'll add the use client directive. Since we are using React hooks and eventually working with GSAP, we need to make sure this runs as a client component. Then I'll import use ref from React since we'll be attaching a reference to the container that holds our animated text. For now, I'll just return a basic empty div. This is just a placeholder while we set things up. Next, I'll set up the ref. Inside the component, I'll create a new reference using useRef and assign it to a variable called container ref and I'll attach that ref to the div that we are returning. This will allow us to target that element directly later on when we run the animation, which is important because we'll be manipulating its children letter by letter. 
Now to make it a bit more flexible, I'll update the function signature to accept children as a prop. Here, we are going to support two types of usage. Sometimes we'll pass in a single paragraph or a heading and sometimes we might wrap multiple blocks. To handle both cases, I'll check how many child elements were passed in. If there is only one child, I clone it and attach the ref directly to that element. Otherwise, I'll return a div like before with the ref attached. This gives us more control and lets us avoid unnecessary wrappers when we don't need them. I'm also passing in children as the content of this container, so anything we wrap with this component will go inside it. And finally, I'll make a small change to the wrapper div. I'll add a custom data attribute called data copy wrapper. This is just a simple way to mark the container when multiple children are passed in. It doesn't do anything by itself, but we'll use this attribute later to detect if the element contains multiple text blocks, and if so, we'll loop through each of them separately when splitting the text. That's it for the structural setup. Now, before we dive into the animation logic, let's head back to the home page and wrap the text blocks we want to animate using this component we just created. So at the top, I'll start by importing the animated copy component so it's available across the page. Now, instead of walking you through each replacement one by one, I've already updated the sections off screen to save us some time. So here is the updated version. As you can see, all the key text blocks like the paragraph in the about section and each of the services descriptions are now wrapped with animated copy. Right now, nothing looks different on the page and that's expected. The component is still just rendering its children as is without any animation applied. But now that we have got everything hooked up, we are ready to move on and start building the animation logic inside the component. First, I'll import everything we need from GSAP. That includes the main GSAP library along with two plugins, scroll trigger and split text. Scroll trigger will let us animate things based on scroll position and split text is what we'll use to break our text down into individual characters. I'll also import the use gsap hook from the official gsap react package, which makes it much easier to run gsap animation safely inside react components. Right after that, I'm registering both the split text and scroll trigger plugins. That step is required anytime we are using gsap plugins, otherwise they won't be recognized when we try to use them later in the animation. Next, I'll add a few props to the animated copy component to make the animation more customizable. We'll define three color states, color initial, which is the faded starting color, color accent, which is the bright neon highlight we'll show while scrolling, and color final, which is the final color the text settles into. All of these props have default values, so the component will still work, even if we don't pass anything in. But by exposing them as props, we give ourselves the flexibility to use different color combinations for different sections of the page if needed. Now let's set up some internal state using React's use ref. First, I'll create a reference called split refs, which will store the character splits for every text block the component wraps. Then, last scroll progress, which will track the user's previous scroll position. This is useful for detecting scroll direction, so we can reset the animation when scrolling back up. Next is color transition timers. That's a map we'll use to store delayed timeouts, one for each character. It helps us create that nice lag between the highlight and the final color. And finally, there is completed characters, which is a set that tracks which characters have already been fully animated, so we don't accidentally reanimate them. All four of these use ref hooks are used purely for tracking internal state and performance since they don't trigger re-renders, the animations stay smooth and lightweight. And now I'll set up the use gsap hook. This is where we'll run our animation logic. We'll here pass in a function that defines the animation. And below that, we include a config object. We set the scope to container ref, which makes sure the animations only affect the current text block wrapped by the component. And in the dependencies array, we include the three color props, color initial, color accent, and color final. So if those ever change, the animation logic will rerun automatically. This gives us a clean and scoped setup that behaves nicely inside the app even if we use the component multiple times on the same page. Next, we'll start splitting the text into individual characters and begin building out the scroll-based color animation. Inside the use this app hook, I'll start by checking if our container reference actually exists. If it doesn't, we just exit early. That means the component didn't render correctly or there is no text to animate, so we don't want to run anything. 
Next, we'll clear any old state and leftover data from previous renders. I'll reset the split refs array to make sure we are starting fresh. Then I'll reset the last scroll progress value back to zero. This is the scroll position tracker we'll use later to detect scroll direction. I'll also clear any active timers that might have been set in the color transition timers map. And finally, clear the completed character set so that all characters are considered unanimated again. Now let's figure out which elements to split. We want to support both single and multiple text blocks, so we need a way to detect which case we are in. If the container element has a special attribute, in this case, data copy wrapper, then that means we are dealing with multiple child elements. So I'll take all the direct children of the container and store them in an array. Otherwise, we are just dealing with a single element, so we wrap that one alone. This gives us flexibility to handle different types of layouts, whether it's just one paragraph or multiple text blocks inside the same wrapper. Once we have the right elements, we loop through each one and split its content into individual characters. For each element, I am using the create method, first splitting the text into words and then splitting those words into characters. We store both the word split and character split for each block and the split refs array. That way, we can reference them later if we need to revert the splits or perform cleanup. After all the text blocks have been split, I'll grab all of the characters across every block and combine them into a single array. These are the characters we are going to animate. And finally, I'll set the initial color for each character using GSAP. This will be the starting faded color before the scroll animation kicks in. At this point, our text is fully broken down and ready to animate with each individual character styled and tracked separately. Next, I'll define a helper function called schedule final transition. This function is responsible for handling the final step of the animation where each character settles into its final color after being highlighted during scroll. Here is how it works. We pass in two values, the character element itself and its index. The first thing I do is check if there is already a timer running for this specific character. If there is, I'll clear the timer first. This prevents duplicate timeouts and ensures we have only one transition schedule per character at a time. Then I create a new set timeout that waits for a short delay, about 100 milliseconds before triggering the final color change. Inside that timeout, I add one more condition. If the character hasn't already been marked as completed, we'll animate it using GSAP. The animation is super quick, just a tenth of a second, and it transitions the character from the accent color to the final color. Once that's done, we mark the character as complete by adding its index to the completed character set. And finally, we clean up by removing that character's timer from the color transition timer's map. This function gives us that subtle delay between when a character is first highlighted and when it locks into its final color, creating a much smoother and more refined scroll experience. We'll call this function later during the scroll update once a character becomes active. Now that we have prepared everything, the character splits, the timers, and the transition function, we can hook it all up to scroll using scroll trigger. I'll create a new scroll trigger instance and point it to our container element as the trigger. This means the animation will begin when this specific text block enters the viewport. For the scroll range, I'm setting it to start when the top of the container hits 90% of the viewport and end when it reaches 10%. This gives us a nice range to work with where the animation happens gradually as we scroll through the block. Then I'll set scrub to 1 which makes the animation sync smoothly with the scroll position instead of triggering instantly. Lastly, we'll use the on update callback. This runs continuously as the user scrolls through the trigger range and it's where we'll handle the character by character color updates. Now let's fill out this callback function. First, I'll get the current scroll progress. Scroll trigger gives us this as a decimal value between 0 and 1. 0 means the element is just entering the viewport. 1 means it's fully scrolled past. This number helps us calculate how far through the text we are. Next, I'll get the total number of characters we are animating. That's just the length of the all characters array, which holds every single character that was split from the text earlier. Now, I want to check whether the user is scrolling downward or upward. To do that, I compare the current progress value to the one we stored last time this function ran. If the current progress is greater than or equal to the previous one, that means the user is scrolling forward or at least not reversing. Otherwise, they are scrolling back up the page. We'll use this to control how characters behave when scrolling in reverse, like resetting their state. Now, I'll calculate which character index we have reached so far based on scroll. To do that, I multiply the progress value by the total number of characters and round it down. This gives us the index of the last character that should be animated at this point 
in this scroll. Everything before this index should already be in motion and everything after it hasn't started yet. Now we loop through all the characters one by one and handle them based on three things. Are we scrolling up or down? Has the character already been animated? Is the character within the scroll range? Let's break this down step by step. First, we check if the user is scrolling up and if the character's index is greater than or equal to the current scroll position. In other words, this character hasn't been reached yet and we are reversing. If that's the case, we treat it as a reset. So first, I check if there is a color transition timer already running for this container. If there is, I cancel it using clear timeout and then remove it from the timer map. Then I remove this character from the completed character set so it can be animated again next time we scroll down. Finally, I set the character's color back to the starting faded color using the GSAP's set method. And once all that's done, I return early for this character and skip the rest of the logic. Next, if this character is already in the completed character set, meaning we have already animated it fully, then we skip it. There is no need to touch it again. This keeps things efficient and prevents flickering or over animating. Then we handle the characters, meaning their index is less than or equal to the current scroll index. These are the ones in view right now or just before it. For these characters, I right away set the color to the accent highlight color. This is the bright in between state that shows the character is being rebuilt. Now we want the character to eventually settle into the final color but only after a short delay. To do that, I call the schedule final transition function but only if there isn't already a timer running for this character. That gives us a smooth effect where the text lights up as you scroll then slowly transitions into its final state a moment later. And finally, if none of those conditions match meaning the character hasn't been reached yet, I set its color back to the initial faded tone. This happens for the characters that are still ahead of the scroll waiting to be revealed. At the very end of the function, I update last scroll progress and store the current scroll value so we can compare it next time this runs. This entire system lets us track the scroll direction, determine which characters are currently in view and animate them in or out with precision. To finish the component, I'll add a proper cleanup inside the animation hook so everything resets safely when the component unmounts or when the user navigates away. First, I clear all pending timers from the color transition map. This makes sure there is no leftover timeout still trying to run after the element is gone which helps avoid memory leaks and weird visual glitches on fast route changes. Next, I clear the set that tracks the completed characters and I revert the split text instances, both the character split and the word split. Everything is important. It puts the DOM back exactly the way it was before we split anything so the markup doesn't accumulate extra wrappers if the component remounts. With timers cleared, internal state reset and split text reverted, the component is left in a clean state ready to be mounted again without side effects. And that's the core of the effect. Now, there can be different ways to achieve a similar result and plenty of small improvements you might explore, batching updates or improving the logic even further. For the animation specifically, my workflow usually starts in plain JavaScript first and then I adapt it to other stacks as needed. I don't personally use Next.js every day, so I'm definitely not a Next.js expert, but if you use it extensively, you'll probably see places to make this better and cleaner. But I hope this gives you a solid working base for the animation concept we are aiming for. Hope you found it helpful. I'll see you in the next one.